I'm looking at all changes, be they both significant and insignificant. And the question is, well, I should probably try and focus on significant changes, uh, uh, or, or how do we know that these are significant changes? Is that what, you, is that what you're asking? In a sense. Yeah, um, well, I, uh, honestly, it's awfully, it's awfully hard to tell. We know that in, in proteins, certainly certain proteins, if you switch the amino acid, the protein retains some functionality, some or almost all of its functionality. Its uh, efficiency might change a little bit if it's an enzyme uh, uh, doing uh, catalysis or something like that. So it's very possible that not all of the changes are absolutely critical for the organisms to be, uh, to be you know, to, uh, the organism to work properly. But nevertheless, you would think that even whether you're an evolutionist or creationist, if you're an evolutionist, you'd think that evolution's had plenty of time to fine-tune this stuff, so you'd think it'd be pretty adapted to its job. Or if you're a creationist, you'd think it'd be designed pretty well. So either way, I guess you would think that it would be pretty, pretty well focused. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. I agree. And therefore, you know, would you, miss, would you not be surprised at finding that actual data um, as you showed on that graph as, as expected? Why does that tend to make you on one argument? Well, because, you know, uh, if you if you just, I you know, I agree, I, I think I see what you're saying, that certainly, you know, in, uh, in we, we think there are these Hox genes now that really do have a much bigger effect, uh, that, that affect development and all, and all those kinds of things. But uh, I would think that you're talking about, you know, from an evolutionary point of view, you're talking about a huge amount of time here and a huge amount of time for lots of mutations. And so if I had a paragraph, I started with a paragraph, I agree that some of the mutations wouldn't change the paragraph a lot, but if I kept mutating for a long time, I would just expect the final paragraph to be a lot different from the original paragraph. Uh huh. No, I yeah, I I, I exactly see what I, you know, I I agree with that to a large extent that in the end these are you know what we'd say gross or uh, large scale uh, uh, predictions. Certainly, uh, certain individual changes uh, may not affect uh, the protein at all, and one, one change could make a big effect. So I could have a, one, uh, something that's actually s more similar uh, over here in uh, protein sequences that actually has much different chemistry because one of these big guys was changed. And I think the more we learn about the biochemistry involved, hopefully the more we'll understand which are big changes and which are small changes. Yeah, that's, a great, that's a great point. Uh, back there. Not really. Uh, the presentation was really mostly uh, trying to show that um, what you often hear in the context of evolution isn't honest. All right? It's a bit different. What's my, what's my view? I'm, I'm a creationist. Uh, I'm not tied down to a specific... I, I think if we look at science as a whole, I think we find that the Earth, is so, the Earth and the universe is so well designed that there must have been a designer. You know, if I'm walking around uh, and I find a rock that's sort of sharpened on one side and has a slot on the other side, I look at that and I call it an arrowhead, and I say, this thing couldn't have occurred by chance. It had to have been shaped by somebody for the purpose of, you know, strapping it onto, an, onto a stick uh, to form an arrow. And so because I see this incredible design, I assume there's a designer. You know, I see much bigger examples of that, you know, uh, uh, when studying science. So I think where if it's self-evident that an arrowhead is designed, I think it's even more self-evident that the, the Earth was designed. Uh, so from that standpoint, I, you know, I think the designer might have, desi might, have, might have created by evolution. I just don't see any serious data to support that. But I'd be willing to entertain the notion. Well, 
I don't see that in the data right now. I don't see a sequence of simple life going to complex life. I agree that the, that the, the gross interpretation of the geological column seems to show that. That, you know, the, the, the woo, going too far, huh? Uh, the, nah, I wish I knew where that was. The deeper you go in the, in the geological column, the more simple life becomes. That's a gross uh, discussion. Oh, there it is. There we go. That's certainly a, 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 a gross description of what evolution says. That, you know, start off with simple life forms. If you believe this geological column represents time, then absolutely this is exactly what evolution, uh, evolution would predict. The problem is, what I don't find is anything connecting these fossils to these fossils to these fossils to these fossils. And that presents a problem. You know, the gross picture seems to be okay, but the details don't seem to be there. And to me, that presents a problem. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I mean Well, no, no and I don't I, I don't think a lot of catastrophists think that either. Uh certainly the uh uh you, you've got to think of the rocks that form the Grand Canyon and then the canyon itself. Even modern geology is slowly adapting the idea that the Grand Canyon was not formed by the Colorado River over 6 million years of erosion. Uh, the rainy, the, not the raining view, but the most popular view right now of Grand Canyon formation is a series of dam breaks that occurred over a period of millions of years, but the individual dam breaks caused a lot of erosion. So sections of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, of the Grand Canyon were formed quickly. How old could the earth be? Yeah. Huh? Because we're videotaping and recording it, we, uh -huh. we need the questions. Repeated. Okay, you need the questions. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> forgot to repeat all the questions. Um, so, uh, how old do I think the Earth is? I think it's safest from a scientific point of view to assume the Earth is on the order of 9,000 years old. That was in the first talk. Well, that, I said that's simply the reigning view, or one of the common views right now is that it could, have, it could have formed over six million years or it could have formed as a series of dam breaks over millions of years. I don't think, I think, I think most likely the Grand Canyon was formed very much like that canyon we saw earlier, uh, that it was formed quickly as a result of a major flood, probably, probably not a global flood, but something that happened later. Yeah. Right. Okay, I... Right. Okay, so the question is, do I see most sediment deposition as catastrophes like Mount St. Helens? Yes, I think, I think that's the more consistent view, uh, you know, looking at all the data globally, uh, that it is the result of catastrophism. The reason you don't see a lot of it happening is catastrophes tend to happen in isolated places, you know, for a short amount of time. You know, so in our lifetime, we only may see three or four ca major catastrophes that could do something like this. So it's not going to happen right out this window, you know. But over, you know, but over the history of the Earth, it could have. And especially if there was you know, one or two large catastrophes, you know, for example, a global flood. Break it down to 9,000 years. Every, every structure on the Earth, like Himalayas and Atlantis and Everest, they break down to 9,000 years. Yeah. Like, if you were to look at the Earth's history, it's been like that for like a million So, uh, so you feel like you you think that uh, uh, there's just not there are so many uh, structures that there's just not enough time even for catastrophism to produce them. They would have to be happening all the time. Well, I guess it depends on how big the how big the catastrophes are to begin with. Uh, the the bigger the catastrophe, the larger the area, the more it could the more it could produce. Uh, you know, if I believe that uh, if, if if I think that uh, uh, science points to uh, evidence that the Earth was one time flooded globally. That could cause an enormous amount of uh, geological formation very, very quickly. Do I believe in Pangaea? Uh, I, th I think there's some evidence for it, yes. Uh, there's, a, there's a model uh, uh, by a guy named Baumgartner called Catastrophic Plate Tectonics, where he discusses Pangaea in terms of, uh, uh, you know, and the breakup of Pangaea associated with the global flood. Right, my doctor's in nuclear chemistry. Do I do radiometric dating? No, no, I don't. I mean, I do nuclear reactions. How do you count for you know, mid-oceanic mid bridges in the Atlantic? 
Mm-hmm. 